now to welcome Professor Dr. Magdalene levy dutter A warm applause. We welcome you today as board member of Germany's Society for Sustainability in, at higher education institutions. In German, that's Deutsche Gesellschaft für Nachhaltigkeit an Hochschulen. Among other things, you're also the head of the Competence Centrum for Sustainable Development at the FOM in Essen, the Hochschule für Ökonomie and Management. Before I give you the floor, you find again the two QR codes for questions, so don't hesitate to carefully listen and to already come up with your questions. Sorry, start? Yes. May I speak? Yes. Well, I am really very happy to be here with you, so I hope that the discussions today uh, gave such an awareness, and I hope that my contribution will be an added value to these discussions. So the title is then the Network in Universities for the Benefit of Sustainability. As we saw today, the universities are very important um, place of education for sustainability. And so this is the reason why we can use the local, national, and international use video networks that are currently emerging everywhere. So they can, they can be seen as examples of social innovation. And in this presentation, I would therefore like to focus on formats that promote a cross-university cooperative attitude. That's uh, something that is important to me. And this presentation is based on a research study of national and international university networks and on my own practical experience in this context. Um, so in three networks. So I'll start with a few words about my experience. I'm a I was, uh, I am a linguist in profession, my profession and have been a professor of intercultural skills at FOM University for the past 10 years and for several years in addition to teaching I've been active in three university networks with different scopes and goals um, with uh, various then uh, ranges. And as we mentioned, the DG Hoch N that focuses on university actors and the special feature of the Hamburg Master Plan EST 2030. There's a structural anchoring of EST in all areas of education and aimed at in parallel. And the third one is the, well, the Competence Center for Sustainable Development, a network with, in which university lecturers from several FOM locations are active, 20 sites to be precise, and brings all of these professors together. So I will briefly outline the current national and international landscape of higher education networks. So all the results that I have collected in ESD domains. And in the second step, I will look at the current mood of change in Germany with regard to the implementation of sustainability at universities and using the example of DG Hoch N also for other actors. And and uh, also deliver a few examples. So I just wanted to show you this um, slide so that you can see what I am going to focus on. So I'm going to focus on transfer and teaching. And so as you can see here, in worldwide, worldwide we have very various. Uh, types of universities and also networks and so I started this research um, and as a member then of the board I wanted to see how uh, what is going on on this stage of sustainability and I was able to establish there are international networks but as you can see here on the net on the left uh, there are more international networks are becoming more and more active and so there are also um, it, within Europe transnational networks and also what is interesting in Europe uh, there, there are also national work na national networks within Europe and then the third group, there are, as I said before, national networks in Europe between 17 and 20 of them of various sizes and 
the Do Gigi Hoch N is one of them, and the most difficult thing was to have a list of the third group. Um, at the time in Germany, well, the list was then amended because there were newer um, or new universities who were joining the whole group. And during my research, I also asked myself the question, what are the benefits of um, such university networks for all the members? And so I was able to have a look and make a list of all of these activities and to cluster them. And as you can see, these networks offer a lot of possibilities to the teachers and lecturers uh, for them to be able to exchange their experience. And besides this uh, collegial, uh, or let's say this uh, exchange, we try to, anything that is new in those networks, we try to make it accessible to all parties. And so, and similarly to wiki platforms and other similar um, providers. And so besides this university network, what they we try to do is, they try to be to act as pioneers. So it's something that has been mentioned very often. People who try to implement the ESDs and such university networks allow for such an exchange so they can build up a community of uh, best practices. And that is something that is very interesting for us as well. More networks, the more networks exist, the bigger would be the possibilities uh, to address our issues and to perhaps ask then for support, financial support from the European Union. And the offers of um, some networks, well, or Perhaps we could also find then other partners within that network for future cooperations for uh, service learning projects. On this full slide, you will receive a script, by the way, so that you can refer to that. I would like to show you what these networks are doing presently. They are very creative. There is something going on in every country. And there are various points that are emphasized. So in any case, you can then find the various uh, formats in order to develop a strategy. I wanted to um, talk a little bit longer about the topics here on this slide. Uh, so. About a year ago, I started um, something, and within one year, we have grown, and we wanted to know what are the principal roles of central actors? How, why are there so many people or universities that want to join us? So in the meantime, there are about 10% of those German universities who have joined. Well, there is political pressure that is constantly growing uh, within our country. In the meantime, so there are um, agreements about the objectives that have been signed and uh, that are to be integrated. And because of the pressure from the consumers, but also from other groups, we have to develop sustainable strategies and also then build up then these uh, sustainability skills within the universities. And then there's the third explanation that ex would explain actually why there are so many universities join us is because there is a foundation that is not only financing such sustainability projects but also supporting then these univers universities, meaning then universities who are implementing and promoting such sustainability products projects. So we have pressure from the political or at the political level and from the consumers. And so many universities are moving on the path of sustainability more and more. 
eine ja, wichtige Rolle spielen. And so we could play an important role in this context. Die DG hoch N ist a rather younger um, association. We perhaps you remember hoch N. Hoch N was one of the financed a project that was financed by the Federal Ministry of Education and Research and who works closely with the implementation of uh, the ESG goals then within the universities and we had the DG Hoch N that was founded in order then to continue to promote that, promote that work. And here you can see the objectives of the DG Hoch N. So we follow or pursue the purpose of supporting and the implementation of UNESCO program Education for Sustainable Deve Development for 2030 in the German higher education system. I would like to come back to our formats. We are not here to actually present our own philosophy in regard to sustainability, but we are here to actually present our own philosophy in regard to sustainability, but we see each other, ourselves as a role of an enabler. We, with our format, we want to make knowledge accessible and promote exchange within our community of practice, but we invite uh, external lecturers as well. We have some tools um, that we um, ha allow, allow our members to have access, our wiki, for example, and our hubs. And a, a heritage from Hoch N, from our former project, are the, the many contacts with experts in sustainability at universities. That's why we have also grown so fast. And these six um, directives of action for six uh, various sectors or scopes, and I have participated in many workshops, and these guidelines have been actually transposed within our wiki, so they are accessible. You can have a look at them. Some of them have already been translated into English. I wanted quickly to talk about our concept of cooperation uh, and our intensive exchange. We have a uh, developed a concept for the project. We invite the institutional members to a welcome discussion to, first of all, uh, know more about the motivation. So uh, it's a, a really a give and take situation of our community. And in a second step, we look for uh, an, an adequate format for their event. So if they have a question, if they have a problem that they want uh, solved, we will check out what format is the most adequate for them. And if uh, they have uh, financial needs for a particular project, we will help them to uh, make the necessary demands. And we will also look out for financial aid for projects that have a, an added value for them. What is important for us as well is, because we are growing so fast, is uh, to actually develop our infrastructure to allow a healthy growth of our association. As I've mentioned before, we, we see us ourselves as an enabler. This is why it is important for us that our events are easy to access, that they are interactive. So compared to other classical um, ed education and tradition, it's not only about transfer of knowledge, but it's, it's about exchanging between the members. And we orient ourselves on the th theory of you. Uh, that has been mentioned several times during the day already. What is interesting for us is, and that's something that Georg Müller-Christ and um, Mr. Giesenbauer have uh, stated, is that each university, either Institute for Higher Education, uh, develops their courses uh, in regard to societal challenges. There are university who have promoted one aspect, others will develop um, uh, slowly in 
towards systemic thinking, but we already have universities where those four forms of thinking are already implemented. So thinking in terms of order, of success, of consideration, systemic thinking. So there is a very heterogeneous public at these universities. When we were founded in Germany, there were already many concepts available, and we thought that it would maybe be more helpful to be a partner for people responsible for sustainability. That's why we focused so strongly on the ecological questions and issues. But uh, since a couple of, ye- of months, we've uh, noticed that the The need for knowledge transfer is increasing. About this uh, transfer of knowledge, what's important here is the cooperation with uh, important institutions in Germany. We are uh, in uh, close exchange um, that can actually lead to a project. We have developed some recommendations uh, because we see ourselves as the speaker of our members. So uh, Mr. Rickman has mentioned the, that project already, but in Germany there is, uh, or rather a couple of years, uh, of years the BMBF uh, founded the Transformation Pathways for Sustainable Universities. These are There are 10 projects that are actually aligned to this with various focus points, and the DG Hoch N also was accorded a budget together with the German Rector's Conference and the Fraunhofer Institute to accompany this project. So during the implementation um, of the project, these three institutions will make sure that the knowledge that is transferred will be actually um, be accessible as fast as possible. So they bring together all the actors, they organize events between the various projects because the the knowledge is only created by exchanging with each other. This will be uh, actually put into a protocol and included in the wiki. So you don't have to wait for years to know what has happened, what is happening. There is an There are alternative uh, financing resources for universities as well. So that's in short what you can find in the wiki. Uh, You can have a look at it yourself. So I wanted very quickly to talk about a second project uh, where I am participating in. It's uh, the project that uh, is actually being held in Hamburg. Uh, The city of Hamburg is actually giving us a larger sum, so between 450 and 600,000 thousand euro, um, to six educational areas, uh, so from small children's education until uh, up to universities, to uh, actually implement sustainability. That's quite a complex question. And with a colleague, I am actually leading the forum University, and we are actually financing measures where universities are looking for for concepts for ESD. And as you can see, there are many actors that are actually participating in the project. You can also find that on the internet. The, the description of this project is there. That's another possibility to actually accelerate this transformation process by not uh, waiting for all the students to know about the the subject, but you start really at an early age of children. And what I wanted to say, the cooperation or networking between universities can actually accelerate transformation because you have the possibility to exchange knowledge. You can also look at what others are doing, and you can also find some relief, uh, for example, for a project such as in Hamburg, you can actually have um, other actors as well. For example, I didn't uh, know much about ESD in uh, um, small children's uh, kindergarten or daycare um, institutions. So this is very good for also to promote um cooperation. And I'm assuming that as of next year, there will be more and more university networks, which will create a certain professionalism 
of this whole project, and I'm looking forward to a global network. And I uh, am really happy that uh, the Swiss university are also starting to participate in this evolution. And I uh, hope that there will be an event uh, like this, similar like this, where German-speaking university will be able to exchange about their success. And I hope that this will happen in the next 12 months. Thank you very much for this very interesting uh, experiences about networking and the projects that you have presented. Uh, networking cr cross, across borders, it's really beautiful that you've come and joined us as far away as from Hamburg. And we also have a couple of questions for you. Uh, these questions are in German, that's why I'm speaking in good German. So you've already answered the first questions a little bit. So the first question is, what are the most important success factor for good uh, or for net university networks that work well? Can you resume that? Well, first of all, you need people who are committed. And what I notice is that in the hubs of this uh, university research, uh, we also have this in our own company that many universities start with a low budget, that they are very committed. Um, there are people responsible for sustainability that are very committed. They will come together and will have a look at what they can what are the issues that they are actually looking at at the same time? So at the beginning, there is like a core a group, people are that are very committed, that, that they then will communicate towards the external world and will actually create kind of a snowball. We also need mul multiplicators. Uh, you have to be really well integrated into networks. That was our advantage at the DG Hoch N. You have to be open as well, open-minded. And if you organize a workshop, you don't have to try to actually influence the content. You just invite people with new ideas. You look at what is important. You uh, invite a specialist from somewhere else. and. Then you organize like a panel where you can actually talk about specific questions. So really be open-minded, create a network, and don't wait until everything is perfect. Just go ahead and start. Thank you. We will answer a second question in English. In scaling up the transition on the field. So that the the university are growing, growing more and more. Yes. So, we have what we have noticed is that uh, for the past 12 months, there have been uh, many networks of universities that have been founded. And three or four months ago, we actually founded a hub where these networks can exchange between themselves. That's what we do. And we've noticed also that it is important that these university networks see that transfer is becoming more and more important and that they make sure within their Bundesland that, um, that if there are other actors that are important, other players that are important, there are so many networks in regard to sustainability, not only at university level. So it's important to think about uh, how you can create a network of networks within, for example, a city. Talking about collaboration, cooperation, but also competition that you can see often as well. Thanks to these networks, can you overcome this competition or this thinking about competition? Well, what we have noticed is that, first of all, we started thinking as DJ Hoch N, we, we thought that we will start with the ecological aspect, the economic aspect, excuse me. Maybe it's different in Switzerland, but uh, we that wasn't covered as much in Germany. And because also the competition is less, so university will actually not compete as hard if uh, one university is more efficient than the other. What we have noticed is that many members actually uh, see that 
The more they give, the more they get back. And once they see that, once they've seen that for a couple of times, they are ready to actually transfer their knowledge as well. That's also what we have noticed. And many universities are also a bit tired of this excellence initiatives, and they actually are actually noticing that many students are actually kind of taking a step back, and it's important to actually include the students as players. That's why cooperation is so important. You have to really live it. Yes, I can actually only highlight this, and that's a topic that we will maybe also discuss later during our aperitif. So a little give and take. I am really happy to give you a small gift from our side. Thank you very much for this very interesting presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, Professor Magdalene Levy-Tutte.